Welcome to the Desert Caballeros Western Museum. We're going to take a tour of our historic exhibitions. The scenes you're about to see accurately depict ranch life and town living in Wickenburg, Arizona in the early 1900s. Let's go explore. Making a living, work on the ranch. Ranching involved much more than raising cattle and sheep. Like the ranch depicted here, many of the homesteads in the Wickenburg area were small family operations. They were economically diverse and depended on multiple sources of revenue, including farming, carpentry, and mining to get by. A homestead relied on the labor of the entire family to succeed. Men, women, and children shared roles and responsibilities, which included working the land, tending to animals, cooking meals, mending clothing, or teaching school. It was all hands on deck every day. Many of Wickenburg's ranchers were Hispanic, and the materials they were familiar with came from the environment. This corral is made from stacked logs of mesquite, a type of fence called a retaque fence, a term possibly from the Spanish verb retacar, which means to pick up, compress, or tighten. Ranchers who came from the eastern U.S. learned from their Hispanic neighbors and quickly discovered it was more cost-efficient to build retake fences than to import expensive wire fences. Children were told to stay off the fence because of the spiders, scorpions, and snakes who would make their home in the mesquite logs. An unbranded calf is someone else's calf. Each rancher had a unique brand that allowed them to identify his or her cattle at roundup time when they were driven to market. Brands were passed down through families like heirlooms. There were two types of branding irons. The stamp iron, which was a custom iron that included the full brand, and the running iron, which had a hook tip that could be used to make or change any brand. The running iron was also a favorite tool of the cattle rustler. Being caught with a running iron in one's possession was a sure way to find oneself on the wrong side of the law, or worse, Vigilante Justice. The Chuck Wagon, where the cook was king. While cattle could better take the extreme heat of the desert floor, goats and sheep could not. With the onslaught of hotter temperatures, herders headed their charges to higher elevations. A public trail for driving the animals, known as a stock driveway, stretched from the Phoenix area through Wickenburg and as far as Williams. The herds returned to the desert floor as cold weather descended on the high country. The chuck wagon was used to transport food and supplies for trail crews and cattle drives and served as the cowboy cook's home on long trail drives. The chuck wagon cook was second in the chain of command only to the trail boss because the morale and teamwork of the group depended upon his culinary skills. The cook's tools of choice were the Dutch oven, a cast iron pot with legs and a rimmed lid, and the coffee pot. They could always be found at the campfire. The Ranch Home. Ranch homes were initially constructed with one room and grew larger with additions as the ranch became established and the family grew larger. The kitchen was somewhat of a misnomer. The room was actually a work center for all kinds of family and economic activities, including cooking, sewing, and school lessons. Ranch residents used wood-burning stoves, or if they were of limited means, an open fireplace, or an Hispanic adobe horno or oven. Stoves required about 50 pounds of wood each day. There was no thermostat, so the fire had to be closely watched, making cooking a time-consuming activity. The family may have slept on an attached porch, enclosed with screens to allow a cross breeze while keeping the desert bugs and critters out. Ever wonder why we say sleep tight? In the 1800s and early 1900s, mattresses were held on bed frames using a woven rope design. These ropes needed frequent tightening to ensure a taut, firm mattress for a good night's sleep. Hence, the phrase, sleep tight, was born. 
The mattresses were often stuffed using straw or down feathers. These materials tended to attract bugs, and so, over time, it became a common phrase to say, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite. In the desert, bed bugs could also refer to scorpions and spiders. The legs of the bed would be placed in cans or jars, which would be filled with water to prevent the critters from climbing into bed. This room recreates a Wickenburg era ranch home as it may have looked in the year 1912. The adobe block walls, tin porch roof, and Ocotillo fence were all selected based on conversations conducted with members of local ranching families. Before refrigerators, ranchers kept their cream, butter, milk, and other perishables chilled in Arizona coolers. The cooler on this porch was factory made, but most were homemade versions made with framed chicken wire covered with burlap on the outside. Water on the burlap, along with a slight breeze, cooled the inside and kept food from spoiling. Leon Powell remembered, my grandfather at the ranch had a desert cooler. It was a metal box covered with burlap. Water dripped over the box and evaporated. It was very efficient. You couldn't make ice in it, but it would keep milk for two or three days. Water, lifeblood of the ranch. A reliable source of water could determine the success or failure of a ranch. There were several methods of collecting water. Ranchers who lived far away from the river piped water to their homes from nearby springs, trapped rainfall in a cistern or rain barrel, and when necessary, traveled into town and bought water. The Brayton Commercial Company, located on the present site of the museum, opened in 1906. Their advertisements carried this notice. We have everything from dynamite to diapers and hair to hairpins. The store was also a banking center for the community, purchasing gold nuggets, granting loans, and extending credit to miners, cattle ranchers, and sheep herders. The alleyway in the back was used by ranchers and herders dropping off their goods to sell while patrons entered in the front entrance to shop for supplies. Brayton's closed in the 1960s. The building then housed the new Desert Caballeros Western Museum. The original building burned down in a fire in 1972 and was rebuilt on this spot, reopening in 1975. In 1895, the arrival of the Santa Fe Railroad made Wickenburg, once a dusty little town on the Hacienda River, a crossroads for miners, ranchers, and sheep herders from surrounding areas like Congress, Aguila, and Salon. They came to conduct business, shop for supplies, attend church, and kick up their boots after a long week of work. By the time of Arizona statehood in 1912, Wickenburg was a regional center for commerce, transportation, and even tourists, Hyder Brothers livery. Before paved roads arrived in Wickenburg, horses were the most reliable form of transportation. Liveries such as Hyder's livery contracted horses and stagecoaches, allowing businessmen and tourists to travel between Wickenburg and Phoenix, or outlying communities such as Ehrenberg, Aguila, or Salon. Later, as the Arizona Highway Department paved the roads to and from Wickenburg, Stagecoaches transitioned from horse-drawn carriages to automobiles. 